My name is Richard Fitzpatrick. I'm an underwater cinematographer and also a shark researcher. Sharks are an apex predator, they're at the top of the food chain and that's really important for an ecosystem like the Great Barrier Reef to ensure uh, the health of everything below it. Um, without apex predators removing the sick, the injured and the weak, you can have um, species that can, um, if they survive, can become genetically weak and more susceptible to things like disease. So the whole pecking order of the ocean is there to keep it in tip top condition and this is really important at the moment. Um, with climate change in that we're trying to make the oceans as resilient as possible. The only way you can have a resilient ocean is of a fully functioning ecosystem uh, from the top order predator right down to the herbivores. For us it's really important to get um, scientific data on the movements um, of these sharks so we know what parts of the reef they're using and when they're using them. Uh, and that allows us to hopefully give that inf information to the managers so it'll help protect these species in the future. Not only that, having this data is essential for the large shark species as well for us to be able to help manage uh, human shark interactions because at the end of the day we cannot manage the sharks. Um, it's just really not achievable uh, for a lot of reasons you know, and it's very topical at the moment. What we do need to do is manage people. And the only way we can manage people is to know when and where sharks occur so then they can make informed decisions on what kind of risks they want to take. So this is the reef tracks application so you can track where all our sharks are and if we uh, zoom in on down here you can see what Amy has been up to. So we caught Amy at uh, the beginning of last year and um, she is kind of unusual amongst all our tiger sharks. She's very resident. She loves Lady Elliot Island. And so you can see the tracks here of her moving. She's almost, on one occasion, gone down as far south as Fraser, but she's very much a homebody. So the plan for the next couple of days is, one, we're trying to catch Amy, who we caught at the beginning of last year. We're trying to see if we can find her again and actually reset the tag. Because uh, the tracks of Amy, um, the satellite track shows that she was a really, she's a real homebody. She's hanging around here, uh, but because she, flip the tag on its side, it stopped transmitting. We've got a surgical tag, um, acoustic tag that we've put inside her that will go for 10 years. And there's three listening stations around the island. And we know by looking at that data, she's still hanging around here. Um, so we're trying to get her back. And then of course, if we catch any other tigers, uh, we'll be um, tagging, measuring them, and um, we'll tag with the acoustic and the satellite tags. If we can go that size, That'll be better for bound. Oh, there, that one. Yeah, perfect. Here's one we said earlier. Oh, look, perfect. One we made earlier? Yep. So that'll take all the bounce out. The shark fishing, people don't realise you want it calm. You may think that's for us, but it's actually for the shark. Because when we've got it on the front deck of the boat, it needs to be calm, otherwise the shark's going to get injured. So, you know, if it was up to us, we'd be out there, but because of the welfare of the animal, we have to wait till it's calm. These are the satellite tags. It's just got the two anodes. So when the dorsal fin comes out of the water, then it turns the tag on and then sends up the signal to the Argos satellite systems. Fishing activities we do for the sharks, we moor as far out as possible and we're setting the lines out so they're drifting away from the island. So at the end of the day, we're literally hundreds of metres away from the um, um, 
conflict with snorkelers. Uh, we're also watching what's happening, obviously. We've got crew on, it's communication uh, happening. So, you know, the dive shop knows where snorkelers can go, can't go. So we're basically keeping people out of our zone. But the interesting thing with tigers, they're very rarely seen here. And it always surprises me that you can be in an area like this and no one's seen tigers. Well, no one has seen tigers. You know, it goes for weeks and weeks and weeks. And if you specifically go fishing for them and you're using the right kind of bait, you can actually get them. So they're here all the time, but people just don't see them. The one thing about shark research that people don't realise, it is a lot of waiting. So we will be out there just sitting around for hours and hours waiting uh, for something to happen. But when it does happen, what we'll see is the smaller float, which is the closest to the hook. It'll go down uh, if it's a reef shark, but if it's a tiger, both floats will go down. So the, the big floats act as a shock absorber. Um, and make it a lot easier for us to handle the animal. And the shark is working against the floats, not the, the weight of the boat. And that's also important to minimise stress to the animal. When we pull it into the boat, uh, I'll put a uh, tail rope on the tail, and then we'll pull the shark up onto the ramp of the dive boat. So the ramp will be down on an angle, and we will pull uh, the shark out of the water um, until the dorsal fin is out, but the head will stay in the water. Uh, the good thing about working on tiger sharks is that they can buccal pump. That means when they're motionless, they can still pump water across their gills. And we'll be monitoring that the whole time, like that she's actively pumping. Um, it's all about the welfare of the animal. So if she looks stressed at any stage, we'll cease all operations and release the shark immediately, even if we haven't finished all the tagging. We found with Amy last year, which is the first time we'd ever used a ramp for tagging that I've ever done. It actually works really well because the um, body weight of the shark just holds it down on the deck, the last part, on the tail end, and which makes it very easy for us to do the measuring, for me to do the surgery, to put the radio tag inside and to apply the satellite tag to the dorsal fin. Uh, we'll take a few tissue samples. The tissue samples are for two reasons. One, um, tissue samples for a DNA study. Uh, so then we can look at how the sharks are all related. And the other tissue sample will allow us to do isotope analysis. And that's basically by looking at the muscle of the shark. And like us, we are what we eat. The muscle of the shark allows us to know what it eats. So we can get a percentage of what kind of food items it eats, whether it's fish, turtle, ray, or whatever, by looking at the isotope signatures in the mussel, which is really cool, new, innovative research. And then we'll let the shark go. So we're trying to minimize our input into the ecosystem. So when the sharks would nose up to the crate, Education and communication is really important for shark conservation and management. And one of the cool things about coming to Lady Elliot is everyone is so keen here. So uh, when we're here working, I'll often give presentations um, to the visitors here. And it's always cool because they've got you know, different questions and perspectives of, of the issues. If we take out sharks, then it'll be a, what we call a trophic cascade, and you'll see a collapse of the, of the ecosystem from there down, as everything just starts falling apart. It's kind of like driving down the freeway at high speed and you take your hands off the steering wheel. It'll keep going for a while, uh, but eventually it's going to crash. If we lose the oceans, we lose everything. Um, once the oceans go, you know, they're the, the lungs of the, of the planet, they go, and ultimately with the humanity will go, and the rest of the terrestrial ecosystems as well. Everything's interlinked. Lady Elliot's an awesome place to come see sharks. And you know, the general public can come and see these animals. There's a massive diversity just around this one small island. Yeah, so if all these sharks here, there's been no incidents here whatsoever. And there's a few reasons. One, 
Sharks really don't want to interact with people. There's heaps of food out here for them. And the water here is so clear, so the sharks see us just as well as we see them. And in fact, when you're talking to a lot of people they spend, that come here, they spend a lot of time being really cool and calm underwater, trying to get as close to the sharks as possible. So it's really, the interaction is up to the shark. Yeah, it's really awesome. It, as a one-stop shop to see as many shark species as possible in a couple of days, this is definitely the place to come.